students today our topic is about the infant oral health and anticipatory guidelines so the identification of the factors which is known or believed to be associated with the condition of the disease is known as the risk assessment and it, it involves the further diagnosis prevention or treatment it is it can be assessed by the caries assessment tool which is given by american academy of pediatric dentistry it indicates the caries with uh, risk indicators that is the low risk moderate and the high risk with three, uh, with three characteristics one is the clinical condition second is the environmental characteristics and the third one is the general health conditions so according to the clinical conditions the patient who are at low risk or no caries teeth with the past 24 months no enamel demineralization no visible block or no presence of any gingivitis and the patient at moderate risk of the caries tooth in the past 24 months one area of the enamel demineralization present and presence of any gingivitis the patient who are at high risk includes the caries tooth in the past 12 months and there will be more than one area of enamel demineralization that is known as the white spot caries and visible block on the anterior teeth the, uh, and radiographic enamel caries high titers of the mutant streptococci microbiologically and wearing dental or orthodontic appliances and presence of any enamel or cochlasia the environmental factors includes the low risk patients which has the characteristics of the optimal systemic and topical fluoride exposure consumption of simple sugars or foods which is strongly associated with the caries initiation primarily at the meal time and high calc giver which is associated with socio economic status and regular use of the dental care in an established dental home and the patients who are at moderate risk include the suboptimal systemic fluoride exposure with optimal topical exposure and occasional that is one to two between meal time exposure to the simple sugars or the foods which is strongly associated with the caries and middle level caregiver caregiver socio economic status that is they are eligible only for the school lunch program and patient who are at high risk includes the suboptimal topical fluoride exposure frequent that is three or more than three between meal exposure to the simple sugars or the foods which is strongly associated with the caries and low level caregiver that is the so, uh, low socio economic status they are eligible for the medicaid and no usual source of the dental care and active care is present in the mother the general health condition include urge uh, will not be there in low risk or the moderate risk it involves only the high risk care is patient that is children with special health care needs and conditions with uh, impaired salivary composition or decreased fluoride of saliva so the infant oral health can be the, uh, detected with a proper medical and the dental history and examining the patient in knee to knee position and uh, find out the caries risk factors according to the caries assessment tool which is given by the AAPD which we have seen in the before slide and along with oral hygiene dietary habit injury prevention fluoride adequacy proper oral and dental development the infant oral examination can be started within 5 to 8 months of age because it is the age where the first tooth erupts and it can be examine with a knee to knee position that is dentist and the parent should sit facing each other in a chair or a stool with knees touching each other and the child egg should be placed over the dentist lap and the parent should restrict the movement of the child's leg and the arm and it can be examined through the lip the lip examination method so this diagram this main picture represents the knee to knee examination with a child's head placing over the dentist slab and the parent is restricting the movement of the arm and the leg of the patient so the objectives of this oral health, infant oral health includes to record any abnormalities of the tooth eruption and any abnormalities of the soft tissues presence of block on the teeth presence of white spots or demineralized areas presence of any cavities to record any developmental abnormalities dental home it is the ongoing relationship between the dentist and the patient with inclusion of all the aspects of the oral health care delivered in a comprehensive and continuously accessible coordinated and family centered way actually it is derived from the medical home which is given by american academy of pediatric dentistry 
so the establishment of dental loan should begin no later than 12 months of the age so the objectives should include to enhance the dentist's ability to assist the children and their parents to schedule early oral health examinations and preventive services for the cost effectiveness individual child risk assessment for the dental diseases monitor the growth and development of the child to make the parent aware of when and how frequently they should visit the dentist so the age specific or oral hygiene instructions which involves the infants for zero to the one year old patient includes cleaning and massaging of the gums the use of the dentifrice is not recommended at this age so the toddlers that is about one year to three years of old the toothbrush should be introduced during this time and the flossing should also be introduced and for the proper brushing non fluoridated dentifrice is recommended the parent remains the primary caregiver of proper oral hygiene with proper positioning of the child and the parent. The preschoolers, that is from the age 3 to 6 years old, the parent to be the primary provider, fluoride enterprise can be introduced at 3 years of age and closing. Fluoride gels and rinses can be given for to moderate to high risk of caries. School age children, 6 to 12 years of age, it can include parents can switch to the active supervision introduction of the fluoridated dentifrices, fluoridated gels and risk for the patient with high risk of caries and chlorhexidin or the listerine mouthwash can be given for the patients with risk for the periodontal disease and the caries. So early treatment of malocclusions includes increased frequency and adequacy of brushing and flossing. For the adolescent that is to 12 to 19 years of age, poor dietary habits and pubertal hormonal changes increase the adolescent's risk for caries and gingival inflammation. The parents should be ready to adopt to the child's changing personality and to continue to reinforce the need for the oral health care and action. Proper fluoride applications, that is the systematically administered fluoride supplements can be given with a drinking fluoride deficiency which is less than 0.6 ppm of water. To optimize the topical benefits of systematic fluoride supplements, the child should be encouraged to chew or suck the fluoride tablets. The professionally applied topical fluoride treatment, it is based on the caries risk assessment. Children at the moderate risk of caries should receive a professional fluoride treatment at, uh, at least every six months. So those with high risk should receive greater frequency of the fluoride application professionally, that is every three to six months. The fluoride varnish, it is easy, safe, convenient and well accepted application procedure which is given by Oka et al. in the year 1994. The fluoride exposure can be better controlled unless it requires only a less chatter. So next is the anticipatory guidance. It is the proactive developmentally based counseling technique which focuses on the needs of the child at each stages of life which is given by Novak in the year 1995. It involves six major areas which is covered in anticipatory guidance includes the oral development, fluoride adequacy, oral hygiene, diet and the nutrition habits, injury or trauma prevention. So the anticipatory guidance for the age group 6 to 12 months includes the oral development involving the first primary tooth that is the molar relation and the formation of permanent tooth buds. So there should be proper review of review pattern of eruption, review teething facts and myths. It should cover the oral anatomical landmarks in the examination and it should discuss about the oral stimulators. Next is the fluoride and it should be recommended against the fluoride use until 6 months of age and it involves topical and systemic fluoride action and the proper examination should include as a top, uh, proper fluoride status of the patient and determine supplement if it, uh, necessary and review the vehicle for the delivery with the parent. Oral hygiene and health, microflora acquisition in infants, mouth cleaning techniques should be considered and the examination should review upon the oral hygiene techniques for the infants with the caretaker and plan for baby's next dental visit, dental care visit based on the risk assessment of the patient. And for the habits, the non-nutritive uh, uh, sucking habit and for the proper use of pacifiers and the proper uh, breastfeeding and the oral health status should be examined. And it should review about the pacifier use, safety and the hygiene issues. Cover the role of the mouth in infant exploration of the environment and discuss about the thumb sucking effect on the mouth, discuss about the breastfeeding effect on the mouth.
for nutrition and diet, nursing bottle to decay pattern, role of consistency of sugars in cages. It should encourage the weaning at the proper appropriate time, discuss the role of sugar in the dental caries initiation. And for injury prevention, it, it involves the oral trauma. It should review what to do if the infant experiences the oral trauma, give parents an emergency numbers. And child development involves at 12 to 24 months, it involves the oral development, that is the completion of primary dentition, concepts of the occlusion, concepts of arch length and spacing, formation of the permanent teeth. So, the parents should discuss about the importance of the space maintenance, discuss about the drug use, drug zinc habit of the patient, review the molar, canine and the incisal positions with the parent during the examination. And for the fluoride, the fluoride in uh, food sources that is in and outside the womb should examine and the level of toxicity and the safety of the fluoride should also be reviewed. And it involves the reassess fluoride status and determine appropriate type of the supplement which is give, which can be given to the patient. Discuss about the toxicity and how to manage the accidental ingestion. Oral hygiene and health. It involves the type of the brush which, which can be used for the patient and role of the interface, role of the child and parent in brushing, frequency and setting of oral hygiene, periodicity of the dental visits. So it involves the review of home care care and procedures and the complaints, work with the parent to solve the problems of the oral hygiene, plan for baby's next dental visit based on the risk assessment. According to uh, for the oral habits, it involves the thumb sucking and pacifier use. It review on it reviews on the non-nutritive sucking habit and safe use of pacifier if not covered previously. And for the nutrition and diet, it involves the examination of the plaque and role of frequency of sugar intake in the dental visits. So for the, uh, for the plaque, it should be discussed about the papyrus and their role in plaque development, review diet outside of the home, discuss frequency of carbohydrate intake as a caries factors and discuss caries control in the framework of the healthy diet. And for the injury prevention, it can be a, it can be of electric card injury, primary tooth trauma and its sequelae or home child roofing. So discuss to the patient about the electric card safety review normal dental and oral anatomy with the parents during the examination, reinforce the own child proofing and use of the car seats, develop plans for the oral trauma management and for preschools and the child care. For child development for the age group of 2 to 6 years, it involves the oral habit which includes the exfoliation of the primary teeth and this is the age where the eruption of the first permanent tooth can be evident, proper molar occlusion should be evident and presence of the healthy gums. So proper review patterns of the eruption should be there, cover the permanent molar occlusion with the parents during examination, point out the permanent molar occlusal anatomy, describe the healthy periodontal tissue. For the fluoride, fluoride sources in the water outside the womb should examine. So, uh, reassess the fluoride status at the periodic visit and determine both supplemental and age appropriate vehicle and non nutritive has habits. If the child still sucking, comes, discuss with parents how to help the child to discontinue the parent, uh, discontinue the habit. For the oral agent and the health, child's participation in the oral agent, it involves the review of home oral care procedures and complaints recommended that the child begin brushing with the parent and supervision and assistance and discuss about the dental sealants. So role, role of the dental sealants in prevention involves, the, uh, already mentioned, discuss about the dental sealants, they explain the dental radiograph, uh, plan the child's dental visit based on the caries assessment, discuss the parental separation or presence of dental presence at the dental visits on normal child and zinc. And for nutrition and diet, snacking and sugar intake at home and at school, use of food to reinforce the behavior, relationship of the healthy diet to the oral review diet outside the home and its caries potential, discourage the use of food as a behavioral tool. So thank you.